Welcome back on AML study by Suhail and today our topic is the best cell committee on banking supervision. So I will dis uh, and I will explain how best cell committees work and uh, what is um, uh, like uh, advantage to follow the bank uh, best cell committee rules and um, as well best cell committees explain and uh, why they are uh, like uh, introduce different type of papers and uh, what is the uh, actually reason to follow these type of uh, papers so pt then we will discuss the uh, history of the Basel committee set out a principal customer due diligence for bank sound management of risk related to money laundering and financing of terrorism <coughs> let's start so Basel committee established in 1974 by the central bank governance of uh, the g uh, j uh, 10 countries so its primary objective is a global a global standard setter and, uh, and they strengthening the regulation supervision and uh, practicing of a bank worldwide with the purpose of enhancing financial stability the secretariat is located at the bank of for the international settlements in basel uh, switzerland uh, banking supervision are generally not responsible for the criminal prosecution of uh, money laundering in their countries. They only introduce this uh, policy and procedure. Actually, at, uh, at the end of uh, 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 banking supervision is uh, not responsible of uh, these criminal prosecutions. Uh, they have an important role in ensuring that bank have procedure in place, including strict AML policies to avoid involvement with the uh, uh, with drug traders and um, other criminals as well as in general promotion of high ethical and promotional standards in the financial sector so um, naturally that they only introduce the policies and procedures and they also um, um, like a make up uh, standards they are not responsible to um, uh, like um, uh, uh, criminal prosecutions in 1988, the Basel Committee issued a settlement of principle called Prevention of a Criminal Use for the Banking System for Purpose of Money Laundering in recognition of the vulnerability of the financial sector to misuse by criminal. Um, uh, there is a set of principles. Uh, Basel Committee introduced some principles. Uh, um, I will explain one by one. First one is customer identification, and this is very important. If uh, any customer came to you, you should uh, supposed to be first identify the customer. Either this one is belong to any pep person, either this one is from high risk country, either this one is uh, doing a high risk business. So you supposed to be identify the customer. Then compliance with law. You supposed to be uh, comply this customer with law. Law. Uh, there is different type. Puff law, some international laws, some regular uh, like local laws, and you should be follow higher. Then uh, conformity with high ethical standards and local law and regulations. Yes, full cooperation with uh, national law enfor enforcement. I suppose there is some require uh, require some um, uh, like uh, cooperation with the national enforcement. You um, and the supervision um, Basel committee is uh, uh, like uh, given uh, instructions. Uh, you supposed to be uh, like uh, cooperate with these type of uh, enforcement agencies. Staff training. This is also very important thing. If uh, you are not trained your staff well, they are not following your um, AML policies and uh, procedures. Uh, so if they trained very well, they will follow. As well, the their uh, training should be in a periodic. And as well, if there is any new notice uh, and uh, new things is came, you supposed to be trained your staff accordingly. Next, last one is uh, record keeping and audit. Uh, look in a different jurisdiction is uh, like a different uh, uh, like um, there is a standards uh, like if you talk about Hong Kong there is seven years uh, um, uh, should be record maintain record keeping but if uh, um, international bodies uh, like as part of the fact of we need to at least we keep data at least um, five years from the date of the transaction or the, from the date of a customer register and uh, then audit uh, audit is important uh, 
you know if uh, there is no audit how can we rectify their mistakes the first one the auditor is highlight these things and uh, we are able to mitigate these things so first one is auditor should be there and um, audit should be independent without any influence so then we can um, able to uh, like um, uh, like uh, to rectify these uh, things and we will uh, um, uh, with the passing of time uh, we are uh, like uh, making our uh, organization um, um, which is implement a high level of uh, principles core principle for effective banking supervision 1997 banking supervisor must determine that bank have advocate policies practices and procedures in place including strict uh, now your customers the rules that uh, promote high ethical and professional standards in the financial sector and uh, prevent the bank being used intentionally or un uh, unintentionally by criminal elements yes if there is a strong policy procedures uh, uh, there and then um, uh, as well bank is uh, follow these uh, um, all uh, procedures so it will help to prevent the bank being used um, uh, criminal elements and it is also very important so uh, let's uh, um, uh, start customer due diligence for uh, banks uh, there is a paper introduced by a uh, basel committee in uh, 2001 and the paper call is customer due diligence for bank and the paper follow a uh, consultation documents issued in jan 2000 one first one importance of uh, uh, kyc standards of, uh, for supervision uh, supervisors and banks to so combating financial crimes uh, ensuring safety of assets uh, additional legal issues uh, not if you follow proper uh, um, things you are not uh, face this type of issue establish uh, your credibilities then preventing scams essential element of a kyc standards next slide i will explain what is the essential um, uh, elements of kyc the role of supervisors as well uh, uh, paper explain very well what is the role of supervisors implementation of kyc standards in a cross border context first one uh, simply issued emphasized in a um, like a basel committee paper first one is four key element of a kyc program first one customer identification you, you need to identify the customer either this customer is a, a, like a um, not a pep like a, if they pep you need to do more enhanced due diligence like if a, this person is a, um, either the, this customer is belong to high risk customer if high risk uh, like belonging to high risk jurisdiction you need to um, um, like a, uh, put more mitigations then risk management uh, actually in an organization they are um, uh, like uh, divided risk in different types like a uh, uh, low risk medium risk high risk uh, like supposed to be uh, as well in risk management we need to um, most of the organization national and international they are applying a risk based approach uh, like if there is 1000 customer with your uh, organization and uh, you have 100 in high risk customer and 200 is medium risk customer and 700 you can say low risk customers so you need to apply more mitigation on 100 which is the like um, fall in a high risk customer so you need to apply here a risk based approach then customer acceptance on the basis of this risk uh, either you all decide uh, this customer we will uh, accept i either reject it and there is sound and um, a strong background on um, on the basis of you take our decision and uh, being compliant in professional we need to check properly before accepting and rejecting the customer then for the time being we need to monitor these customers and as well we follow the transactions which is done by from the customers then specific customer identifies issue related to high risk customers uh, high risk customer is like trust nominees fiduciary accounts then corporate vehicles if you are not uh, familiar with the corporate vehicles how they did the money learning you were supposed to be go my previous uh, presentations and there i will explain very well uh, how corporate vehicles are used in money laundering and terrorist financing introduces new business yes this is also uh, like in uh, coming high risk customers 
then political persons also uh, fall in high risk customers uh, non face to face customers uh, because we don't have uh, like actual face to face uh, meeting with the customers so uh, as well as uh, fall in uh, um, uh, high risk customers corresponding banking uh, because of course in uh, during corresponding we don't have first hand information and we also rely on the responded bank so in this way uh, corresponded banking also come in a high risk customer and we need to um, if we talk about high risk customers we need to put more mitigation keep it mind and uh, we also put um, uh, once we have put mitigation uh, this customer we should become in a um, medium and low risk uh, then we will uh, uh, do the business then um, also emphasize this paper emphasize uh, some more uh, things um, um, Basel uh, paper emphasized that to ensure that record remain relevant, there is, uh, is a need for bank to undertake regular review of existing record. Uh, yes, account should not be prohibited but be subjected to exactly the same KYC procedure as other accounts. Okay, if uh, any customer want to open more account, um, uh, you can open, but uh, you can ex you cannot ex escape the KYC procedures because maybe you will think we already did this one KYC. Why we need two more um, again? So no, the uh, like um, supervisor um, given instructions um, uh, like we need to. If there is more than one account, we need to follow same procedure for all accounts. Then bank should develop. Uh, Customer acceptance policy and procedure describe the customer background, country of origin, business activity, and uh, other risk indicator. Yes, this is also very very important uh, uh, thing. Uh, we uh, accepting the, uh, there is a policy, MLCFT policy, as well as customer. Um, a company part which type of customer we, we will entertain and uh, how uh, we will uh, calculate the risk uh, and how it will uh, impact on the organization and regarding to risk um, uh, if you want to understand how organizations um, calculate the risk you need to wait for my coming videos private banking accounts should under no circumstances uh, be allowed to escape kyc yes if there is a private banking account you can escape kyc identify a, a corporation that operate account and when professional intermediaries are involved should verify the exact relations uh, you know nowadays there is a, a lot of companies as well as there is a many professionals involved during the relationship between customer and organization so uh, we need to identify what is the exact relationship between these professionals and uh, the organizations then identify procedure when dealing with the non face to face customer if uh, any firm is uh, dealing with the non face to face customers so there should be a strong identification procedures Pri uh, periodic uh, bank wide implies training yes there is a should be training because if an uh, implies not trained very well how can they will uh, uh, like uh, follow the rules uh, updated rules regulation so it is very important uh, uh, periodic uh, um, bank wider uh, implies training internal auditors and compliance officials should regularly monitor staff performance yes on the basis of this performance we are categorized the implies continue monitoring of high risk uh, accounts by compliance person this is the major responsibility of the compliance people they should they should continuously monitor high risk customers and um, they also uh, like uh, mitigate that risk and as well they need to collect uh, more documents from the customer appropriate action against officers who fail to follow who fail to follow kyc procedure yes there is a lot of penalties even they put in a jail if a compliance professional is not follow the kyc procedures properly so be careful uh, my friends here we need to more carefully uh, doing these things um, next is sound management of risk related to money laundering and uh, financing of uh, terrorism in feb 2016 the basel committee issued sound management of risk related to money laundering and financing of terrorism and it revised journal guide to account opening 
risk analysis and governance the first step is managing money laundering risk is to identify and analyze the risk which will lead to the design and effective implementation of appropriate control yes next one three line of defense the first one is the line of business second one is aml compliance functions audit function uh, the supervisory is just uh, given instruction we should uh, we should follow these uh, three line of defenses first which type of uh, businesses then there is a compliance uh, policies functions and uh, as well there is a procedures and how they follow this uh, type of uh, procedure and uh, last one is uh, last uh, defense line is audit function if there is an independent audit uh, auditor will be highlight the issues in, uh, in the systems and uh, then uh, we can uh, able to rectify these type of uh, issues then customer due diligence and acceptance uh, banker cdd policy should address customer and beneficial owner identification verification and risk profiling here there is uh, three things first one identification second one is verification third one is risk profiling you should first identify the customer okay if one customer came to you and he will present some documents you should identify the customer then you verify through different sources you are supposed to be ident uh, verify these documents through different internet um, uh, websites and then risk profiling either this customer is uh, falling in a low risk medium risk either high risk there is a procedure first one you customer identification then acceptance on the basis of uh, your due diligence then transaction profiling then risk rating and documentation and uh, uh, there is a monitoring and investigation if uh, uh, there is something uh, happened and something is suspicious transaction monitoring system and ongoing monitoring monitoring system is a key to mitigation money laundering risk within the bank the committee recognize that aml risk require more than just appropriate policy and procedures bank must have adequate and appropriate monitoring system uh, yes uh, you know if there is a only policy so um, there is baseless useless if you are not like trying to implement these things in your aml system so uh, uh, supervisory strongly recommend us uh, we should implement these things in a uh, transaction monitoring system and a uh, system will be uh, like um, um, uh, capture all data and will given the uh, uh, risk and they will uh, um, uh, pin out the highlighted issues so we uh, supervisory as well uh, 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 like given strong recommendation we will follow uh, and implement the tms uh, then management uh, of information primary purpose of aml rules to create uh, records and uh, enable law enforcement to trace uh, financial transaction back to the people who conduct them bank should retain record uh, if there is strong mis uh, management system so if there is something happen after uh, uh, like suppose um, after some time after happened the transaction so you can able to trace out if they, you have a strong management system. So it is also uh, like uh, there should be strong management system. And reporting of suspicious transaction and asset freezing. Where suspicious activity has been reported, the bank should take appropriate action regarding the customer, including raising the risk rating of the customer and uh, deciding whether to retain the uh, relationship either the account or uh, entire relationship okay uh, this is a very uh, important thing please listen be careful uh, if you found a suspicious transaction and uh, uh, you are not going to raise uh, through your uh, portal like uh, we are in UA, using GoML you are not raising the STR you are the responsible maybe um, a regulatory body came and you they will catch you and they will even um, give you some penalties so you supposed to be be careful by once you are found any suspicious transaction and um, um, you supposed to be raise this str through your uh, um, uh, like a regulatory body instruction uh, instructed um, uh, portal so be careful 
uh, and if uh, there is strong ground if you are going to raise the str there is strong ground um, why you are raising the str what is you found what is your investigations and how you investigate and uh, how there is you found this one is suspicious and the same other way if you are not raising the str you also have strong background and on the basis of that background you can satisfy the regulatory authority um, we are investigated and we found uh, we couldn't found any suspicious thing that's why we did not uh, raise str so there is a uh, in a um, um, good organization there is also there is a review uh, strs as well there and uh, we should also uh, by being compliance professional we should follow these all steps and it is very uh, um, like a uh, important thing on the basis of str you can uh, uh, like decide either you want to continue the relationship with this customer either you want to just uh, freeze the fund or either you want to just uh, raise the str and you will continue the business with uh, uh, that uh, particular identity so um, all uh, the scene is uh, taken from compliance professionals so uh, compliance professionals should be much knowledgeable and uh, have much uh, uh, experience and the seeing power to take a decision these type of things so thank you for watching my channel so uh, i strongly recommend you if you want to learn more regarding aml cft studies you should be you subscribe like share my videos so i it will be encourage me to upload more videos and as well i would like to say in the end thank you very much who are um, like uh, giving comments and valuable uh, uh, time and uh, they also suggesting some uh, uh, things hopefully i will uh, follow these things and i, I will uh, more explain these things so um, thank you again